This section of your video, I'm going to show you how to somewhat service your heater. These new heaters, a high efficiency heater, a lot easier, a lot easier heater to service than what the old ones were. Basically, you've got on your control board here two dummy lights. One says service heater, one says service system. 90% of the calls we get on a heater is not working. There's nothing wrong with the heater whatsoever. Somebody's either had a pump basket get clogged up, filter pressure got way high on them and the filter needed to be backwashed, or a, or a skimmer basket or something was clogged up. Something causing not enough water flow to your heater. This thing will shut itself down if it doesn't sense enough temperature change in the water. In other words, it's not transferring enough heat from the heater to the water. Or if it senses not enough pressure. And like I say, 90% of the calls we get on these things, there's absolutely nothing wrong with a heater. It's usually within the system, either a clogged pump basket, clogged impeller, plugged up filter, or a clogged skimmer basket, which all, have, all we have all ran through prior in the video here. So if you do have a service heater or service system light come on, first thing you want to do is make sure you've got good flow. Make sure that your pump basket's not clogged up. Make sure your skimmer basket's not clogged up. And make sure your operating pressure on your filter is correct. And when you're using these hydrotherapy fittings on your steps, I don't suggest running the heater at that time as well. When you run those hydrotherapy fittings on your steps, you're slowing your water flow down through that heater. That's going to sense, that heater's going to sense that slower, slowed down water flow and it's not transferring the heat as fast. That's going to shut the heater down. So uh, first thing you always do is, again, check your pump basket, check your filter pressure, and check your skimmer basket to make sure everything's working properly. 90% of the time, it is not the heater. So after you've checked all that, verified that you, everything's A-OK, -okay, go downstairs in the basement, shut the breaker off that controls your heater. Wait to the count of 10, turn that breaker back on. That re resets your control board. Now your heater should fire as long as you've got good flow. Like you say, there was no loss of water flow someplace due to pump basket, clogged filter, or clogged skimmer basket. Then at that point, if the heater doesn't fire and it keeps shutting down, Inside the heater, it's on that control board. It's got dummy lights that let you know exactly what's wrong with the heater. You can help us out on servicing this thing is, like say, after you verify that you've got good water flow and nothing was wrong with the system itself, what you want to do to your heater is if you look real close here, this slot right here, a slot right here, one right here, and one right here. There's four screws on there. It requires a regular screwdriver. We'll undo these four screws. And that's going to let us pull the lid or the skirting right off from this heater. You see we've got to get to the inside of it to the back of this control board and it's got a switchboard in there with indicator lights. Now you see first thing you'd want to do though is verify that you have good flow from that heater. Make sure that it's not something causing the problem in your pump filter, skimmer, or pump baskets that's slowing your flow rate down. Because 90% of the time with these heaters, that's where they shut themselves down. I don't think I've had but two or three heaters that I've actually had to replace any parts on. And I can usually, if I can get the customer to pull this thing apart like this, I can have my, the parts that I need right in hand before we even get there. It's not a deal where I get out there, then try and diagnose the heater. I can have the customer diagnose the heater for me and have the parts that I need before I even reach your house and have it fixed the very same day we get there. But after you've gotten those four screws removed, both halves of those, that skirting pops off. Then around the top here, you'll find these little pins in about three places. One was right here, we pull this. There's another one, I guess there's only two of them. Another one on this side. 
pull both these little pins. Now this top half of the heater. Nope, you gotta be. Don't miss it. Pops right off from there. You flip it upside down, and right here you'll see a series of lights. Again, first thing you want to do is verify that it's not inside the pump, the filter, or pump or skimmer baskets. And again, you do that by making sure your, your pressure is right and that nothing's clogged up inside the pump or the skimmer. Then shut the power off to the heater, wait 10 seconds, turn the power back on. Come back out here, turn your pump back on, turn the heater back on. It should fire. If it doesn't, there's going to be either a service system or a service heater light comes up on your control board. At that point in time, do not turn the power off. You want to go ahead and split the skirting on it, pull the top off, and one of these lights will be lit up. And underneath each one of these lights is a code. The first one to the left says ES2. The second one says AGS, then there's an AFS, an ES1, an HLS, and a PS. One of those lights will be lit. That would be all we would need from you is to call us and tell us what gummy light you had come on on your heater. That lets me know exactly what part is bad on the thing. I've got the things right on hand here at the shop so we could bring what we need right out to the house and makes it that much quicker and easier of a fix for us. And that's about all there is to service in the heater. Like I say, 90% uh, of the times, it's not the heater, it's the pump and the pump or the filter. Correct the problem with the pump and filter. Shut the power down to the heater for 10 seconds. Turn it back on. Reset your control board. And you're back in business. If that doesn't happen, after you've cleaned the pump, filter, and everything seems to be running right, you're still getting a service heater or service system light come on. That's when you want to split the thing apart and look at the back of your control board here and find out which, which light is lit up. Let us know what code is lit up. We can figure it out from our uh, service manuals what part we need and get the heater fixed that much faster.